there all YouTubies and Tubeds and welcome back to Retrospects. Now, I did promise in the last video that I would show some more Nintendo goodness and this episode will be full of just that. But firstly, I want you to notice that Spudsy here is looking very dapper in his new outfit. Yes, I haven't finished it, but he has at the moment got the Union Jack where I've exchanged the red for the channel orange colour and uh, he's got these funky jeans with the seam down the side and the pockets on the back and uh, yeah I need a little bit of work doing to him spacing made an air on the front looks pretty cool he isn't by any means finished I haven't done the face the hair or the uh, bandana or the gloves but he is on the way now you remember in the last episode I showed you a wooden NES and this gamepad um, and they were pretty nifty and uh, this, I believe, uh, I demonstrated in full effect that you can just drive this thing around. It does these nifty donuts and it's pretty damn awesome. Well, remember also that I said that Erio 2000 did not like the use of mods. Now, you know me and I do like the use of mods. And I'm glad, so glad that I finished that build in vanilla. Because A, everybody can use it, and B, it was a challenge, and a challenge that I overcome. But, what I've got this video, let me just jump off here and show you something special. Let's delete that out, and let's bring in something a little bit different. Uh, if I can just find it, and here we are. This is the modded version of the gamepad. Now remember originally I said it was a shame that we had to have seats on the um, top of it and we got the saddle seat. This time we have no such thing. This time we have just a plastic looking feel to it and that is because we're using Grego parts. Uh, so definitely modded. We also have seats on the edges of all of these and also these including this one which is the driving seat so I can sit down here for argument's sake or here or even over here so this thing can hold a few passengers and when you sit in the driving seat it for the best part works like the other one so it'll be quite familiar except this time it's the nine key to transform the wheels look slightly different and you may notice that there's MJM uh, tiny thrusters on the end there now what that enables this to do is nothing in this mode however if I go back into the untransformed mode what it does enable me to do then is if I press the T key it takes off and those thrusters push us up now underneath you will notice the yellow and black blocks and controllers and I don't know if you've watched any videos on this but those are RAR units and uh, how they work is you have two bearings on either side of a controller. I can demonstrate that quickly for you. So you have, let's just build you one. So let's put that there. We will need a block. We'll need a controller. And we'll need a bearing for this. And also we will need a switch. And we better use the hammer to demonstrate. So, place a block firstly. You will then place your controller on that. You can delete that block now because you no longer need it. Put two bearings on one side, two bearings on the other side, and then a block and a block and another block and another, oh, not there, and another block. And you will notice that they attach themselves, all of those to the bearings. So now we have that, we can put a switch on top connect the switch to the controller, connect the bearings to the controller as well. Now the most important thing here is that we make sure that two of these are going one way and two of them are going the other. So two in clockwise, two in anti-clockwise. We then need to use the weld tool and you can only do this when it's on a lift and we need to weld that one to that one and that one to that one. Now what we've asked it to do is completely turn around which shouldn't be physically possible so set those to 180 take it off the lift and now if i press this it turns like that and they shouldn't be able to push this over so i should just now knock it around the map 
and it's unable to push over. So it works kind of like the suspension glitch. Uh, pretty strong though. Four of these is holding that up over there and then that's how I can fly it around stable. So that's how it works. It works on the axis that you've got it on. So at the minute that is working on a forward and back axis from, from that angle. If you were to do it like I have on here, I have got it on two axis, so we have it, let me show you. I have it there on the um, side to side axis, and I have it there on the forward to back axis. And that will stop it tilting in all of those directions. However, if you use enough thrust, you can still force it to do it, and that is how I can turn it slightly and use the uh, pitch and the roll when I'm in the air. So to demonstrate that again, I take off. When I'm off, what will happen is the rail units kick in at a certain height. Uh, when they do, I am then able to turn it backwards and forwards slightly and so pitch it and roll it just a little bit, just to adjust. Otherwise, it is very stable and doesn't fall over. So the T key takes it into the air and the G key moves it forward. And that is as easy as it is to fly. And then you use the uh, F and the H key to turn it around, all on thrust. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty cool little thing. So a little bit more than the other one did. So let's head over here and find what else I've done that used mods, firstly. Uh, so let's land this thing. I should be able to come in quite close. The rag units will turn off. I can then press the 9 key to get the wheels out. And there we are on the floor. And we're back into car mode. Pretty cool, I think you'll agree. So, as you can see over there, I didn't just mod the pad. Nope, I modded the console as well. So, let's put this on the lift and get rid of it out of the world. We don't want too many items in here. And show you what I've got. So, this is the modded console. Now, there's a little trick. Let's turn it off. There's a little trick that I use in order to turn my wooden console into a plastic console. I wondered if it would be possible to have some sort of tool that could convert every single block from one material into a block of another material, but keep all the colours and everything else the same. So I asked the person that I thought would definitely know the answer to that question, and that person was Durf. And with a little Durf magic, this is what we were able to do. So he has come up with something for me which converts all of the blocks from one material into another by pure Durf magic and I'm sure you will show a video on that very shortly. Um, so thank you Durf for that because it's absolutely fantastic and in future builds it will help. Uh, especially if you're looking for modded parts, you want to turn a vanilla, uh, a modded build into a vanilla build and you've got odd modded parts left somewhere in there but you can't find them, you can just convert them to wood or something else that is vanilla and the build will work. So. It works pretty much the same as the other one. It just looks nicer. So much smoother. We've got that plastic kind of look to it. I've got holes here instead of pins this time. So more like the original was. Uh, the button still works the same. It's still the same. Uh, Irio 2000 design. Uh, the cartridge still goes in the same as the old one did. And it's still on thrusters exactly the same. So nothing has changed about the functionality of it. However, it does look nicer. These little inlets on the side, the RF inputs, the power adapter, it all looks that little bit smoother and nicer. And because it does that, looks that little bit smoother, I am calling this the smoothness. Yes, this is the smoothness. And uh, this is the dustiness, the cartridge, well known for having dust in there where you have to blow the dust out in order to get them to work. So smoothness and dustiness. And the, the uh, vehicle I just drove over here on, I'm calling the air sickness. <laughs> and uh, also because I'm using MJM mods I was able to have the card on the inside here so like the pins of the card as you plug it in uh, and I'm using those uh, propeller parts to do that and everything else pretty much looks the same now this is a game you may recognize what I tried to do there I'm not sure but it's the best I could do in the pixels I had um, so that is my Nintendo in modded I wanted to show you that just to show you how much of a difference using mods can make to a build. 
I know Erio wouldn't like to see me using mods and I'm glad that I didn't in the initial build. However, just to show you guys what you can do, I wanted to show you it in a modded version. It was very easy using the tool from Durf. Uh, so thanks once again to Durf for that. Now, you may have also noticed these two guys standing here. Um, I don't know who they are. Uh, we must have a leak somewhere because we've got a couple of plumbers here. I think they're famous enough for me to not have to tell you who it is, so I will not. Uh, if I jump on his head and I press the one key, he will do this little jig or a little dance. Uh, but what that also means is that with the addition of thrusters inside, I can move him forward as he does that and we get this kind of little hovery run jump kind of movement. It's not <laughs> great, but... It is what it is. It's simple. And uh, yeah, so kind of like a little running plumber. And on the workshop it will be called Running Plumber. Uh, so that's him. Nothing much more to show you on him. Let's just turn him off and jump off him. Uh, we'll put him back on the lift there. Ooh. And take him out of the world. Bye-bye. So, another one over here. This one is slightly different in the fact that he has a raccoon's tail and raccoon ears. Now, for those of you that have played the game that this guy is from, you will notice that those raccoon ears and raccoon tail, you'll probably know what that means he's going to do. Uh, in the game, they enabled him to fly, and it is no different in scrap mechanics. So, he flies, and much like the game, his arms go out, his feet go back, and it's pretty graceful in his flight method uh, pretty cool again I think you find a few people I've shown this to have really liked it uh, I must admit it came out a lot better than I thought originally uh, but yeah it is using thrusters and uh, suspension glitch stabilization in order to work uh, but it works pretty well and I've got two more builds I want to show you today and they are way over the map over here so I'm gonna shoot over there on this guy and see if we can find them so these are characters from another game and as I get closer you might see what they are so let's just come into land nice and gently and he should do this like little bounce as his feet to the floor let's see oh don't crash it don't crash it there you go and he lands perfectly and he does that because there is a sensor underneath him uh, which, when active, makes the feet come down and the arms come down. When inactive, the feet go back and the arms go out. And they are set to a height of... I, I can't remember, but let's just check. They are set to a height of eight. So when he gets eight blocks off the ground, his feet go back, his legs go back, his arms come out, and his tail waggles and he flies. Uh, pretty cool. Again, it'll be on the workshop for you to try out. Let's take him out of the world. Bye-bye. And then the last two. Now, Komodo did a video on these, or not these, but a video including something from this game. He did some pixel art from it. The game was Duck Hunt. It's an old NES classic. And these are characters from that game, two of the ducks. Uh, I do believe that the blue and the pink duck was a little bit faster than the other than the standard duck was the black and white with the green head. Uh, these, <laughs> these are are quite funky little creations and I'll show you why. So I've called these two different things. This is the Easy Fly Duck and this is the Pro Skills Duck. And they are different in their in their ability to fly and different in their control method and I will explain and show you why. So this one here is the Easy Fly and he's named the Easy Fly because again he is using RA units uh, created by RA RA Gaming and uh, there's four of them in there keeping him straight so much like the pad he will not tip when he's in the air so if I jump in that seat there and I press the two key to shut the back I can then press the T key to take off and forward will send me forward and left and right will turn me and he can go pretty fast uh, but he's very easy to fly because he doesn't tilt so it makes him quite an easy vehicle to control. Uh, let's just take him back over there and then show you the difference between him and the pro skills. So if I can land him, I'll try my best. I'm not sure I'll be able to do it because 
Not the easiest thing to land, but let's try it. I'm going to crash it. Oh, almost perfect. Uh, we landed him. There you go. And that doesn't always happen because they're not that easy to land. However, you will notice, much like the Mario, on the sensor underneath, there is something that sends the feet back. So when inactive again, the feet go back on a uh, bearing, on controllers, and uh, it will do the same with this one. This time, I'm not able to get in the back. And the reason for that, if I show you, is I've got the same door here, but there's no room. In there is just a bunch of... Uh, thrusters and there is a chair but that chair is only a quick escape route should you get stuck in it if you land upside down because if you land upside down you will come out of the seat you'll end up inside him so if you get in that seat and jump out you'll come out his belly and that is how you get out should you capsize him so let's shut that down there uh, you can climb up his wing for easy access if that beak's not in the way there's one thing I didn't show you on the easy fly deck but I will demonstrate on this one and both of them have the capability of doing it so if I can take off, and then might, the other one might get in the way here, um, I can use the flight method. Oh, yeah, I thought so. Now that's what I meant about going upside down. If I jump out now, I'll be inside. Oh, actually, he popped me out. But normally I would be inside, and that is how you use that chair to get you out. So let's put him out in the open, and this time we'll try again. So the T key will take off, and this time I can use the arrow keys to do the pitch and the yaw. And now he has no forward thrust. No forward thrust at all. In order to get him to move, you have to tilt him forward. And it's the upward thrust that pushes him forward when you tilt it. So like a helicopter would work, it kind of pushes itself forward as it turn, as it um, moves. And that is how you get your forward thrust, by using the upward thrust at a tilt. Um, I can control him with the uh, TGFH and arrow key combination like I do the uh, TIE Fighter and some of my other creations. Um, the only thing he's missing is that forward thrust, but when I put it in, he kind of went a bit balmy because I think it was uh, reacting with the wing animation and he was all over the place with the forward thrust, so it didn't really work that well. It works much better using just the upward thrust and the ankle. Let's see if I can land him. I don't hold much hope out for this. I don't think we're going to land two. Oh, no, didn't think so. Upside down. And this will definitely demonstrate what I mean about the uh, chair being on the inside. So, look, you'll end up going inside him. As I said, you jump in this chair, jump out, and you are outside. So, a couple of ducks there, uh, flapping around. And the one thing, again, I didn't show you. Let's just put this down. It's like the thing that they both do. Let me show you what it is. So, let's go back in this one. It's nothing special. It's just a small thing. If I get in there, it's two... I can press 3, and he will quack. Or as near as I can get a quack in a scrap mechanic. If I jump out of him, yeah, and onto the other one. This one has a slightly higher pitch quack, but still, it quacks. So let's see if I can do this one. This time it's the G key that does it. A higher pitch quack. And I think we're going to go for another little flight. So, these all will be available on the workshop for you to mess around with. I uh, hope that you like them. Uh, I had a lot of fun building them. I've had a lot of fun playing with them. Other people that have visited my world have had quite a lot of fun playing with them. And I'm sure you will too. Um, if you like them, obviously rate them. Uh, subscribe to them on the workshop. I'm sure that you will like them. Uh, and I'm going to go for another little flight right now. Uh, but if you like this video, as always, why not spank the hell out of that thumbs up button. And don't forget to subscribe for more retro specs. And until next time, see you soon. Bye for now.